Das amerikanische Flugzeug in Not, seit vier Tagen in den ganzen Westalpen fieberhaft gesucht, ist entdeckt. Hier liegt es zwischen riesigen Spalten auf dem Gauli-Gletscher. It happened 70 years ago. A US military plane, a Douglas DC-3 Dakota, got lost on its way from Munich to Marseille and crash-landed on the Gauli Glacier in the Bernese Oberland. Growing up in Meiringen, Roger Corniole has been interested in the event since his childhood and has written a book about it. The pilot didn't know where he was landing. There was dense fog and it was snowing. He was on autopilot. The plane hit the ground at 280 kilometers per hour. It stayed in one piece, which saved the crew's lives. They could huddle in the cabin of the wreck. Their guardian angels must have worked long hours. The US military plane wasn't allowed to enter neutral Swiss airspace. This is why no one expected the Dakota to get stranded in the Bernese Alps. Two precious days had passed before rescuers started looking in the right place. In their final radio message, the crew said they could only survive for another 24 hours. The message got picked up at the Meiringen airbase, a sign that the plane must have crashed close by. The American military began dropping food, blankets and medicine from the air over the Gauli Glacier. When a 50 kilogram bag of coal hit the plane's wing, the Swiss realized it was getting dangerous. For the rescue team too. The Swiss military attaché convinced the US to stop their air intervention. The US Army did everything to rescue their countrymen. 150 mountain soldiers, paratroopers, jeeps and vehicles with chains were deployed to Meiringen. But the American Army lacked Alpine experience. At some point, the head of the Swiss mountain guides advised them not to launch paratroopers onto the glacier, or they would have to be rescued as well. He said the mission could only be accomplished on foot and by climbing some of the way. So the US unit stayed in the valley, while the Swiss army sent over 80 men to the Gauli Glacier. Meanwhile, the rescue mission hit the international press, Hordes of Swiss and foreign journalists headed to Meiringen. Hotels were completely booked out. For example, the Leuven, which at the time was run by Irma Jan's parents. The 90-year-old remembers how the phones were constantly in use in November 1946. Yes, it's got that. Gosh, we had to be careful. I remember one phone call that cost 146 francs. That journalist just wanted to leave without paying. But I got him. I noticed him spending a lot of time on the phone. <laughs> Finally, the rescue came from the air. Two pilots performed a daring landing with skis. A runway had been marked out by the rescue team on the glacier. This kind of maneuver had been practiced during the war. Das Unglaubliche gelingt. Und jetzt ist die schnelle Bergung der Passagiere zum Greifen nahegerückt. Die zwölf Verunglückten, unter denen Mr. und Mrs. McMahon mit ihrer elfjährigen Tochter zu bemerken sind, haben die fünf peinvollen Nächte in der bedrückenden, eisigen Stille tapfer überstanden. Was sensationell ist. The sensational thing was that one could take off on asphalt with wheels and land on the glacier with skis and then take off again. This was new. This rescue mission resulted in the foundation of the Swiss Air Rescue Service. After nine flights, everyone was safe. And so, one of the biggest Alpine rescue missions had a happy ending. <laughs>